Hey, welcome to the podcast, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Uh, sorry, it's been a little, uh, a few days since I've done the last podcast. Just been uh, one of those times where I just hadn't hadn't been able to do it. Just been busy. So uh, obviously, this isn't uh, just a hobby for me. <laughs> it's actually a, a profession. So other things sometimes come first. But uh, did want to get a quick one out to you because the market obviously moving higher, and you're starting to hear some of the people that have really been bearish. You know, the last golly, several months, several years, starting to kind of come around. And maybe that's a contrarian sign. But um, but we did have the Dow Jones up 129 points today. Uh, we had the NASDAQ up 60, kind of led the way, which was nice. Small caps up 1.8%. So small uh, small caps, technology kind of led the way. And, and, and that's very encouraging. Semiconductors did very well today. And uh, pretty much across the board, most sectors – we're up. Now, we had this deal happen before the open this morning where it was uh, said that the Fed was going to release their minutes, and they usually release those during the day sometime, I think around one o'clock or so typically. Well, apparently, uh, they sent an email out with their minutes to some staffers and some lobbyists yesterday afternoon. And, of course, yesterday afternoon, the market just mysteriously ran up <laughs> towards the end of the day. And everybody just said, oh, isn't that great? It's just going up. And lo and behold, we find out that there was this uh, uh, information leak, we'll call it. And so the Fed was forced to release this early before the market opened today. And that's exactly what happened. Now, first of all, when we think about information being leaked to people in Washington and giving them an upper edge, an edge that we don't have. Uh, it's, it's reminiscent of the 60 Minutes expose on the how insider trading was essentially legal for Congress. And, uh, and they were making lots of money from it. Now, lobbyists and staffers are getting this email uh, in advance. And, you know, potentially were able to trade on it yesterday. Do we know they traded on it yesterday? No. Um, and secondly, to be fair, if you look at the FOMC minutes, uh, you could have read them and said, uh-oh, the Fed's going to take away the punch bowl sometime at the end of this year because a lot of, a lot of them wanted that. Uh, two said that they thought it would go through the end of the year. So there was some, well, is the market going to go down on this or is it going to go up on this? And you know, they, they can talk the talk all they want, right, the Fed. Uh, but it's about walking the walk. They can say that they want to, you know, take, take some of the stimulus away and slow the bond purchases down uh, towards the end of the year. But remember, those, those minutes were before some of the data we got last week. Remember, these minutes were for a few weeks ago. And some of the data that was released last week, the weaker jobs report and some of these things, may have changed the game plan. And by the way, when I say they're going to talk the talk, but they need to walk the walk, they may be jawboning because that's what they do. They may be testing the market saying, let's just see if we put this stuff out there, how the market reacts. Bottom line is, apparently the market doesn't believe what they're saying because they can be as uh, you know, negative as they want or uh, say this or say that. And at the end of the day, show us. And what, what we see still is you guys are buying $85 billion a month and treasuries. And so it keeps interest rates low. And lo and behold, stock market says, party on. And so uh, up we go. And it was kind of in the uh, nick of time because as we pointed out in prior podcasts, we were at a, a support level here where, you know, we had, I know this is a, a trend line that I have drawn, but I said, it's going to be do or die time. If you remember me saying that. And and, and sure enough, we hit this bottom here and now it's it looks like we're going up to the next level. So really, when you squint, you're getting up, you know, let's call this three steps forward, one back, three steps forward, one back, three steps forward, one back, and up we go to the next level. So it looks like 1,600 on the S&P is a foregone conclusion. Looks like Dow uh, 15,000 is probably a foregone conclusion. And you know, the market continues to move on. And so there's not a whole bunch going on. I think if you're invested, if you're not invested, it's really difficult to get invested. If you are invested, do you take profits right now? No, I don't think you do. I think if there's if you're you know 100% in equities, of course you could take some things and, and sell them and, and make some make some money there and take some off the table. But in the big picture here, keep going 
with what's working. Yesterday on Twitter, I was talking about the fact that uh, many were complaining about the fact that healthcare and utilities were leading the rally. And that was a warning sign. In fact, I did a blog post about a week ago and said treasury bonds were starting to outperform uh, riskier types of bonds. You started to see small caps and mid caps underperform. So money was rotating into large caps. You started to see oh, healthcare and utilities lead the way and, and transports were going down. So you start to see this kind of risk off, but you have to acknowledge that it reversed. Okay, In the last couple of days, it has reversed, and now you're starting to see those things lead again. You're starting to see stocks make new highs again. You're starting to see some risk-taking. Yesterday, we saw metals and mining, and those types of stocks really do well. In addition to transports, you have biotech going up, telecommunication stocks. Today, tech was leading the way. Uh, oil and gas companies leading the way today. But here's the thing. For those complaining about utilities and healthcare going up, how about owning them? <laughs> Why complain about it? Why not just own them? So owning healthcare, owning utilities, stick with them. And, and some of you on Twitter are saying, but they, they look extended. They look, they look frothy. They look expensive. The trend is your friend is all I can say. And I think part of what you have to be doing is staying with things that are working and not always take profits on those things that are working, but stick with them. And then on the flip side, avoid the things that aren't working. You know, gold is something that a lot of people don't understand why it's not working. Uh, even uh, very influential people are saying we're perplexed why gold's not going up. And I had done a uh, uh, an article, I guess over the weekend, pointing out that gold was at a very important inflection point here and maybe the run isn't over for gold. If you look back, you know, back in this June, July time frame of last, um, last summer, so we're approaching about a year, here we are a year later at this same place. And it gyrated back and forth before it took off. And if you go back a little further, here is the other spot back in January of 12. So we've kind of had the sideways channel it's been in. And yeah, if, if you're a betting man, you would say, well, the next move has got to be back up. Uh, but just like the stock market, when we look at the S&P 500 and we change this to a weekly picture and we go back, just because it's at this old high doesn't mean it has to roll over. And it's the same thing with gold. Just because it is at this level where it was here and that should provide support, that doesn't necessarily mean that gold's going to rally. I'm just saying this is a, an important inflection point for gold. And I think if you switch this to a weekly picture going back, you know, gold does have a little wiggle room here that it could fall and find some support, maybe around the 140 level on GLD. But uh, but it look, it's it's getting to be do or die time, and we're in an all out currency war now. I mean, no holds barred. You know, Japan, uh, the U.S., uh, Euro, everybody is printing, 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 and gold should be supported. However, the fear in the marketplace is going away, and that has been part of a driver, and maybe everybody that wanted to buy gold the last few years has bought it. So you are seeing gold be bought uh, still, the, the actual commodity, but as far as the GLD, which sometimes controls the price of gold, actually, people sell GLD, it actually forces the actual price of gold to go down, you may be seeing the end of that. So it's just something to watch, and, and as I've mentioned on here, I've got a very, very small piece of gold and uh, GLD. Uh, I think gold in the bigger picture is a trading vehicle. And, and again, just like utilities and healthcare are leading right now, and I'm invested in those, if gold was to be the thing that was leading and working, I would invest in those uh, and invest in that. And it's not right now. So simply avoid in the big picture. Again, if you want to take a piece of it because you think it's a bargain compared to where it used to be, maybe it's a core position and it's a small piece, that's fine. I mean, the, the story of why gold really went up all these last years hasn't changed much at all. Uh, in fact, it's probably gotten worse and probably more compelling for gold. But anyways, I think that's what's going on today. Stick with what's working. Uh, and we had this little breakout today. And, you know, despite fiscal cliff a few months ago, despite the election, despite you know, another threat of a debt downgrade, despite confiscation of people's savings accounts in other countries, and despite threats of a nuclear missile being launched at the U.S., despite all of this, the stock market continues up on its merry way. 
and many are perplexed, but really what you have to do is follow the money because, again, these things that you and I may be worried about may be something to truly be worried about, but you may have the timing off. Maybe we need to be worried about it six months from now. So again, keep a balanced approach, keep the income coming in, but participate in the market because it is going higher right now. And you have to acknowledge that. And at some point it will take a break. It may even completely roll over. But for right now, obviously breaking out to these newer highs, I will say in the very, very short term, even a day like today wasn't as strong as it appeared on the surface. Underneath the surface, the volume wasn't quite as good. So it was just, again, it for 130 points on the Dow and the NASDAQ being up 60, not as good a day as you would have thought. We haven't, we're haven't. we seeing that the buyers may be getting a little bit exhausted, but again, uh, don't be too quick to take profits. All right, guys, very quick podcast. Thank you for joining me, and we will talk to you again soon.